put your hands together and welcome Mr. Mark Tonelli. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Usually, usually when that comes up, Norman May's famous goal, goal, goal call, people are going, yeah, let's go. But after that aerobic session, we're on a little bit tired after watching that. <laughs> Apart from the fact that it's Norman May's 80th birthday today, and we're going back to Sydney, uh, Channel 10 News is crossing live for his 80th birthday, and that is obviously a wonderful, wonderful piece of uh, Australian broadcasting history. You know what I like about the medley relay? Like the packaged goods business, it's a group of specialists who all think they're good trying to work together cohesively as a unit. You know what I hate about the medley relay? Someone's got to do the butterfly. <laughs> do you ever feel like you're the one that has to do the fly? You're the one that has to do the hard yards all the time in your team? Or what about backstrokers? How about backstrokers, for instance? Backstrokers are the people in your team who have the most belief. They have to. They can't see where they're going. <laughs> Hands up, business backstrokers. You don't, I'm not real sure where you're going, but you're determined to get there. Mm. And then there's the freestylers. Put your hands up, freestylers. Freestylers just do whatever they like, whenever they want. <laughs> so, see, there we go. I knew we'd have a few freestylers. <laughs> and that leaves the breaststrokers. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you know who you are. Now, that might sound like a bit of fun, but really, over the next few minutes together, we're going to talk about teamwork and how you fit into a team. And don't let anybody ever tell you there's no I in team because there's a me in team. It's just hidden. Teamwork depends solely and totally on you. And what part leadership plays in there? We're going to have a look at the most important singular thing that you need to have and do to get where you want to go. It's called commitment. And it's the commitment to use every resource at your disposal, no matter how small, to get where you're going. We're also going to talk about flow, where everything just comes together beautifully and does the job for you. And we're going to have a look at something that we all know that we need to do. We never really do it or we never really do it very well. It's called goal setting, or I prefer to call it gold, G-O-L-D setting, because we're going to talk about setting unrealistic and unachievable goals to get one of these, an Olympic gold medal. But first, let's start off with, who knows why swimmers shave their heads? Speed, the need for speed, I suppose, would be a good answer at a conference like this. Speed, yeah, why do they shave their heads, but? Sorry, cut down resistance. Aerodynamic, cut down a bit of resistance. That, that, yeah, or can make you look mean as in the mean machine. Anything else? Makes you feel good. Are there any shaved down people here? <laughs> it can. I was at a hairdresser's conference once and one of the delegates got up to me and said, oh, well, the chlorine simply ruins your hair. You might as well shave it off anyway. Like, no, that's not quite it. Well, look, let's put it this way. If you appreciate the commitment you must make to be elite in sport or in business, you'd be mad not to take advantage of every tiny assistance you could get, right? Now, look about, about that, that, uh, that video. Let's face it, you know, it was a long time ago. But certain things never change. And what you need to do to be the best you can be is one of them. Now, I, I thought I'd just have a little look back and think, OK, well, what did I need to do to achieve that? Or what does, say, an average swimmer, elite swimmer, need to do to achieve that? Have you ever thought of how many phone calls you'll take and make in your career? How many reports you'll do? How many presentations you'll do? Well, I thought I'd add that up for an elite swimmer. And it, adds up, it comes to this. See, I swam for 13 years. Swimmers train 11 times a week, two or three times a session, 11 months a year. Right? And in that time, with the 13 years that I trained and my teammates, I swam 40,000 kilometres, which is around the earth. A mate of mine used to platform dive, Steve Foley. He was an Australian team diver. He reckons he climbed Mount Everest in training seven times and then jumped off. <laughs> and while we're talking about Mount Everest, let's just, just a moment um, remember a great New Zealander who just passed away in Sir Edmund Hillary. And I thought, OK, so we've done all this, we've done um, 40,000 kilometres in training. How long does that take? So 13 years training three or four hours per session, that's two years in the water. I did this 25 million times. I did this, whoop, sorry Mike, 8 million times. I did this 
six million times. <laughs> now look, I know, they're just phone book numbers for you, aren't they? You know, 25 million of this. Please, stand up. Stand up for me. Bear with me. Bear with me for a second. I'll get rid of this. 